Okay, and we're live. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for another MSU Science Festival's Afternoon Science Snack. I'm Catherine at the Science Festival. I'm also joined by Roxanne Troon from the Science Festival. And today we're also joined by Dr. Norm Lowndes from the 4-H Children Gardens. Welcome, Norm. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, so to start, uh, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourselves, yourself about the garden and what we'll be talking about today? Sure. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Norm Lowndes. I'm in the horticulture department at Michigan State University. And one of the things that the horticulture department has are the gardens um, on the south part of campus. I am the, besides being a professor, I'm the curator of the 4-H Children's Garden. And what that means is that basically I'm in charge of everything that goes on with the children's garden from getting it ready to plant to the programs. And um, I've been doing this for a long time um, in, at the Children's Garden for 23 years now. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk a little bit about butterflies in the garden, which is a program that we normally do in the spring. And obviously this year it got changed around just a little bit, but I wanna show you some things and give you some ideas of some things that you can do at home. So butterflies in the garden. Uh, just so um, normally what we would do is in starting mid-March and going through the end of April, we'd have butterflies in the garden in, in the indoor 4-H children's garden, which is a space of about 1,500 square feet. It's not real big. Um, we have school field trips Monday through Friday. Basically, they start about nine in the morning and go till about two in the afternoon. Then we would have uh, general public hours Monday through Friday, two to four, Saturday and Sunday, 10 to four. And we do a special event called Butterfly Day. That's a half day event. In 2020, everything changed as you all know. So everything went online. We now have virtual tours. We have some butterfly videos. We have a thing called the Butterfly School. And uh, so we're gonna look at some of that. And one of the things that we're doing is we're encouraging everyone to do butterfly stuff at home and to become what we're calling a butterfly friend. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a minute. So let's go back, step back just a second and think about why in the world do we even do butterflies in the garden? Why would you wanna do something about butterflies at home? And so here's a few reasons. First of all, butterflies are fun to watch. They're really cool if you watch them flying. They, don't, they fly like nothing else. They don't look like a bird when they fly. They don't look like a bee when they fly. They kind of look like they're crazy when they're flying. Um, and so they're fun to watch. They're important pollinators. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but they pollinate some of our flowers. And if we don't have pollination, we're not gonna get fruit. If we don't have fruit, we're not gonna get seeds. Um, and we be, have all kinds of problems. Um, third thing, a butterfly, the butterfly life cycle is pretty cool. And so we're gonna look at that just a little bit. Actually, um, my education coordinator, Miss Jessica is gonna show you that in a few minutes. There are lots of really cool butterfly and plant connections. Um, butterflies need plants, plants need butterflies. It's a very nice symbiotic relationship. The other thing is that butterflies are very fragile. And so there are lots of things that affect butterflies. And there are things that we can do to help butterflies be more healthy um, and be around and all of those sorts of things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you into um, our website. So it's 4hgarden.msu.edu. And I'm gonna show you the online butterflies in the garden stuff that we've put together for this year. So if you go to our website, it's gonna look like this. So this is 4hgarden.msu.edu. And if you go right up here and click on butterflies, it's going to take you to our online butterflies in the garden. Um, so it's not quite the same as a real visit, but for this year, it's the best we can do. So we hope that you enjoy this. And what we're encouraging people to do is become a 4-H Children's Garden butterfly friend. And to do that, it's, we're gonna call this our butterfly school. You're gonna, you, um, gonna do a number of things and I'm gonna go through some of those and show you what some of the resources are. And then at the end of it, you take a butterfly knowledge quiz and that gets submitted, it comes to me um, and I will send you a butterfly 
friend certificate. So it says, congratulations, has your name as an official 4-H Children's Garden Butterfly Friend. Take care of our special friends every day. So what you need to do is you're gonna study a little bit about butterflies in the lab. So we're gonna look at that. Um, you're gonna be able to take a virtual tour and, and look at our indoor garden and check out some of the special information. We put together a whole bunch of butterfly crafts. Um, we have some information about planting butterfly plants at home and even a butterfly garden. And then there's the butterfly friend quiz. So let's get started on this. Um, I'm not gonna download, or you can, you can, I'm not going to hear, but you can download. This is a down uh, document that you can download and you can use. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in and we're gonna study some stuff with Miss Jessica. Welcome to the Michigan 4-H Children's Garden, Butterflies in the Garden virtual field trip. My name's Miss Jessica. Let's head on into the butterfly lab to learn more about our flying friends. Butterflies are a special kind of animal called an insect. Insects have some common parts. These include head, thorax, abdomen, six legs, compound eyes, and antenna. See if you can find these on the diagram. Don't worry, butterflies can't bite. Butterflies have a special mouth part called the proboscis. This long curly tongue helps them to sip nectar from flowers. Butterflies have two special sensory organs on their head called antenna. These special organs help our butterfly to hear and to smell. It also helps the butterfly to keep balance as it flies. Look out, our butterfly is watching you. Butterflies have two large eyes called compound eyes. These eyes seem much differently than we do. Our two small eyes only see one thing at a time, but our butterfly's eyes look as though it's seen through a prism. Let's take an even closer look at butterflies underneath the microscope. You can see our butterfly's long curly tongue and their compound eyes. Here we see the butterfly wings underneath the microscope. Butterfly's wings are made of millions of tiny scales. These scales give them color and decoration and also help them to fly. Now let's explore the butterfly life cycle. A butterfly's life cycle has four stages. The first stage is an egg, followed by a caterpillar. The caterpillar then forms a chrysalis, and finally, it will emerge as an adult butterfly. Can you find the eggs in the picture? Butterfly eggs are laid by female butterflies on special plants called host plants. These hosts will be for the caterpillars to eat. In Michigan, we have a threatened butterfly called the Carner Blue. This butterfly is an egg for 240 days. The second stage in our butterfly's life cycle is the caterpillar or larva. This is the growth stage. The number one job for our caterpillar is to eat and eat and grow and grow. The third stage of our butterfly life cycle is the chrysalis or pupa stage. This is where our caterpillar transforms into a butterfly. This transformation is called metamorphosis. The last stage of our butterfly's life cycle is the adult butterfly. This is what we'll see flying in the butterfly house. That's where we're headed next. Come with me to learn a little bit more about some of the butterflies we'll see. In our butterfly house, we usually have eight to 10 different butterflies flying at any given time. These butterflies include things like Julia and zebra longwings, monarchs, painted ladies, and buckeyes. Let's go in and see what we can find. Okay, so that was a little bit of learning in, normally we would do that in our, what we call our curiosity classroom. Obviously this was done online. And so a little bit of information about butterflies. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go in and we're gonna do a photo tour of the butterfly flight house. And so this one, I'm gonna do this way. So we're gonna go into the indoor garden. So welcome to the indoor 4-H children's garden. And we're gonna take a look around and see what we can see. We're gonna go back here to the chrysalis cage, but on the way, I'm gonna stop here and 
Um, if you're actually doing this at home, you if you have a uh, smartphone, you can use the QR code reader to look at this. And so we have a bunch of extra information, but I'm gonna do it this way. Uh oh, I think I, no, maybe I'm not. I closed down that page. Make sure I have way too many, I have way too many things open. Nope, here it is. So if you scan that code, it will take you to this page. And the one that I just showed you is about our butterflies. So it gives, tells you a little bit about the butterflies that we have in the garden. Um, we have both, all of our butterflies are North American natives. Only some of them are ones that you would find in Michigan. So the ones you would find in Michigan is a monarch, red admiral, painted lady, and the common bug eye. Let's look at the red admiral. Here, so here it is. Here's the common name, the scientific name, a picture of it. It gives you a little bit of information. It talks about what the host plants are. So a mother butterfly is a very, very good mother because what she does is she lays her eggs on a plant that she knows those little caterpillars will eat when they hatch out. And so there are host plants and that's the reason because that's what those caterpillars will eat. Once they get to be adults, they are looking for nectar. And so they're looking for a different set of plants and ones that have special flowers that they can get the nectar from. Um, so for the Red Admiral, there are general, generally two broods from March through October. And then there's some um, identification information here as well. So, all that QR code, that's what we call a smart sign, will take you to this information. So we also have the monarchs, the painted ladies, and the common buckeye. <clears throat> so let me do a little bit more of that tour. And we're gonna move on. And so we have some feeding stations as well in the garden because we can't put enough flowers in there to feed all of our butterflies. So you can make a feeding station. Um, this is just a um, sponge sort of things, a scrubby that you would use for scrubbing dishes. And then you put, you can do it two ways. We generally get honey and you dilute it about uh, nine parts of water to one part of honey. And that is about the same as what a butterfly would get out of a flower. The other thing that you can do, and we found this out from um, the place that we get our butterflies from, which is called Butterflies, Butterfly Dans, which is in Florida, is you can use Gatorade and butterflies like it. Um, so, and then you can dip your finger in that and you may be able to get a butterfly to land on your finger. Just like this. So that butterfly, there's, uh, let me stop. There's its proboscis coming down to, in essence, lick up or suck up the um, fluid, the liquid, the butterfly food that's on this little guy, this guy's finger. We're going to keep walking for a little bit and we're going to go over to the chrysalis cage. When we are doing butterflies on a normal year, we bring in about 200 of these chrysalis every week and they hatch out. We bring them in for about six weeks. What you have to do, so we get the chrysalis, they look like this. But in order for it to hatch out, it has to hang in the same orientation that it would if the chrysalis had been, the, the caterpillar had made the chrysalis. So we have to have a way to hang them. We glue a little cotton ball onto the chrysalis, then we pin it on this, and then they can hang in the chrysalis cage and they can hatch out. Here is some information about chrysalis. And I just wanna show you this because there's some kind of interesting um, information here. And so if you were to scan that code, it would take you to this page. And this is what the chrysalis cage normally looks like. Hundreds of butter or chrysalis in there. We have this paper under here to keep the moisture up. And if you were to look at this paper up close, see right there, 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 those look like little red dots. And people always ask, is that blood? Well, no, butterflies don't actually have blood, but they excrete a red liquid um, which is called merconium or papal fluid, pupal fluid, 
Um, it's blood isn't blood, but it's waste material that is produced during the pupa stage. So that's what you see underneath there. Oops. Go on just a little bit further here. Show you a couple more things. This is our little mini amphitheater, which is like the amphitheater outside. Have a space here that you can come. You have to be short in order to get through that. And I want to show you one more. So here's butterfly eggs. So this is what they look like. Butterflies usually lay their eggs on the bottom side of a leaf because it's a little bit more protected. Um, so that's, this is what it looks like. It looks, if you were to, if we were to look at this under a microscope, it looks like a little tiny, tiny, tiny um, cob of corn. It's, it's got really interesting indentations. Um, it look, almost looks like the individual um, kernels of corn on a corn cob. More information, butterfly fun facts. I want to show you that one because there's just some kind of interesting things that you can learn about butterflies. So did you know they can see red, green, and yellow? They don't see other colors very well at all. So you would expect if you were looking for butterflies that you would look for them going to red or yellow flowers. Uh, top butterfly flight speeds about 12 miles an hour. So if you wanted to race them on your bicycle, uh, depending how uh, old you are and how big a bike you have, you might beat the butterfly, you might not. Um, they cannot fly if their body temperature is less than 86 degrees. So one of the things that you will always have to have in a butterfly garden or you want to have is some sort of, um, usually it's, it's some sort of rock or something like that that is a darker color that's just sitting there that as soon as the sun starts shining on it, it will warm up. You'll see butterflies on that basking. They basically are sitting there with their wings spread out, warming up until they get warm enough that they can fly. They taste with their feet. That's kind of amazing. And that's part of why they're so fragile. So anytime a butterfly lands on something, whatever is on that surface, it's going to taste it. So if someone has sprayed a pesticide and it just happens to be on the cement, a butterfly lands, it's going to taste that. It's gonna ingest some of that. Um, and so it can be very, they're very, very delicate that way. Um, they bask in the sun, they feed on a variety of liquids. They're second largest group of pollinators after bees. They smell with their antenna. And if you listen to Miss Jessica, she also said they use those antenna to help them balance when they fly. So it's kind of cool. So they have the, these two, you know, you've seen people on tight ropes, they have that big long stick that sticks out and they move that up and down. Butterflies are using their antenna kind of the same way. And the largest butterfly in the world is called the Queen Alexandria's birdwing. It is about 10 inches across. If you were to ever see one flying, it's, um, it looks like a bird, okay? So I think that's about all I'm gonna show you on the tour here. Let me just see if there's anything else I wanted to show you. Um, but here we are in the indoor garden again, and there's lots more to see in there, but I'm going to stop with what I'm gonna show you right there. And I'm gonna go back here. We have a couple of videos of butterflies flying in there as well. Um, I'm gonna let you look at that on your own. The, other, the next thing that we would like is, is we wanna provide people with some things they can do. So here is a craft page that Miss Jessica put together that has more butterfly crafts than you would ever want to do in your entire lifetime. But there's some really cool and fun stuff here. They're all pretty easy to do. They're made, um, she picked out things that are, these are things that you would probably have around home or you could do pretty, uh, get pretty easily. So there's lots and lots and lots of crafts that you can do. Then what we really would like you to think about is the plants that would go into a garden. If you were to come, if we had a normal year and you came on a field trip, we would let you give you a plant, you would transplant it and take it home. And quite often we plant marigolds. Um, sometimes we do some bee balm, sometimes some cosmos, sometimes heliotrope, lantana, zinnia are all plants that we would plant. So this is a combination. These right up here are one 
plants that butterflies just absolutely love and they use them both for um, nectar plants and for feeding plants. These are the plants that we have in the 4-H children's garden. So we have geranium, we have a pentas that's also called butterfly flower, heliotrope, which is this blue flower, lantana, which is a, typically a yellow flower. And one of the things you'll notice if you look at these flowers, they all are kind of wide flowers so that a butterfly can land on them. And then they have individual florets that a butterfly can put its proboscis down in to get the nectar. Marigold is another one. Petunia is another one. This is a single flower. And here is verbena, which is another one that's a, a real good butterfly flower. So those are some that we have. Um, we have some different ones growing in the outdoor butterfly garden. I'm going to show you a picture of that. But we have butterfly bush, we have fennel, we have pentas, sedum. And then we have a bunch of butterfly plant information. So if you're interested in, and if I can encourage you to do some butterfly stuff at home, um, there's some good information here. And one of the kind of good English gardens um, down near Detroit has this neat little table here, annuals that attract butterflies. So these are the butterfly plants. So these are generally good plants for both the larva and for the adults. And these are specific larval plants. So if you have a combination of these, so these are the annuals, the ones that are gonna die every year. And here are perennials that attract butterflies and some herbs and some shrubs. So good resource to have. So we would like you, encourage you to create your own butterfly garden or at least plant a few butterfly plants. So after looking at this information, um, make plans to grow your own. Another thing that you can do as part of our butterfly school is you can become a butterfly. So if you were to visit the 4-H, indoor 4-H children's garden during butterflies, we have these silhouettes up and you will stand in there and, and mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, or, or whomever has the camera would take a picture of you. Can't do quite the same, but what I do have is the silhouettes. And if you are so inclined, you can take a picture of yourself and you can Photoshop it into that um, silhouette. And so that's me as a giant swallowtail. We've had a few students go online and do this. And so um, it's kind of fun, takes a little bit of time, but it's kind of a cool thing to do. And then what we ask is that you test your butterfly knowledge. So if you click on this, it's gonna take you to a butterfly knowledge, butterfly friend knowledge quiz. Um, we do need your name and that is so that I can make out the certificate for you. And then it goes through some questions about butterflies. I'm not gonna go through those now. I wouldn't wanna give you all the answers. The other thing that we have is we know that you might have some questions. So, you click here on our page, it will take you to um, a place where you can ask questions. We do need your email address so I can send an answer back to you or your parents' email address and ask your question and we will answer those so that you can get your questions answered as far as uh, information about butterflies or the plants that you might wanna grow, uh, creating your butterfly garden, whatever your question is. Maybe it's some things about um, our garden as well. So those are a bunch of the resources that we have available online. Now, let me go back here. And I'm also going to invite you, if you're anywhere around the East Lansing area, to come out and visit our outdoor butterfly garden. So this is, this is what it looked like in the winter, or just after the winter. You can see it is the body of a giant butterfly. This is one wing, this is a second wing, and they're planted with plants that attract butterflies. This picture right here is pretty much what it looks like right now. These plants here, sedum are growing. We actually have some butterfly weed back here that's a little bigger and we've planted some stuff, but that's more or less what it looks like. If you were to come a little later, this is what it starts to look like. So this is midsummer and this is late summer. And you can see there's lots and lots of plants in there, lots of things that are, all of these plants attract butterflies. And almost any day when you're out there, you will actually be able to see some butterflies around as long as it's sunny and warm. If it's cloudy, butterflies aren't gonna be out. They don't go out in the rain. 
Um, if it's cold, they're not going to be out either. Then the other thing that I would like you to do is to look for butterflies in your yard and start thinking about some of these things. What butterflies do you see? And you might have to take a picture of them and then go online and see if you can find them, butterflies that we have. If you have a picture of it, you don't know what it is, send it. Um, actually, I'll add that to the question so you can upload a picture. Um, and we'll figure out what it is for you. We'll ask what color flowers are they on? Remember, they don't see all the colors. If, you're, if they're on a flower and you go up to them and you don't make a whole lot of movement and stuff, they'll pretty much stay there, they're busy, but see if you can see their proboscis. Quite often you can see it all stretched out and going down into the flower and see them moving from one flower to another flower. If you go back to the butterfly videos that we have on our website, you can see that because I took some pictures of that. What other things do you notice? What questions do you have? So let's spend some time looking for butterflies in your yard or around your house, or maybe you're gonna come out to the children's garden and look for them there. So let me finish up by saying what can or should you do. Um, take some time to learn some more about butterfly, our butterfly flying friends. They're important pollinators, they're cool to watch, they're colorful, they're fun. And so learn some more, look through the, some of the things that I showed you. Um, do our butterfly school and become a butterfly friend. We would love to have more butterfly friends out there. Look for butterflies where you live, plant your own butterfly plants or an entire butterfly garden. The links that I have there with the plants will give you um, a whole lot of information about the butterfly garden. Ask your butterfly questions. So click online and ask them. Visit the 4-H Children's Garden. If you see me out there, I'm out there. So right now I'm out there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Say hi. So with that, let me stop and um, ask if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, ideas, or wonderings. And if you need to get a hold of me, that is my email address. So do we, we have, have We did have one comment from Erica and she said a butterfly once fell in her, in her hand, which I thought was pretty cool, which led me to a question of, do you have to be careful of its wings if they get on you? Are their wings sensitive? Yes, their wings are very sensitive. Uh, Jessica showed that they're made up of a bunch of very small scales. And when you touch a butterfly, if you rub it at all, those scales will come off <clears throat> and it will make it so it's much, much harder for that butterfly to fly. So what you really wanna do is get the um, nectar on your finger. And then the easiest thing to do is go up to a butterfly that's already on a flower and put your finger up next to that butterfly and quite often what it'll do is it'll just crawl from the flower onto your finger. Awesome. And then you'd mentioned that butterflies aren't out when it's windy or rainy. Where do they go? Um, usually you don't see them, but if you look carefully, quite often they attach themselves to the underside of leaves and they hang there upside down. Um, you could ask the same question, where do they go um, at night? And um, you will, if you look around, you'll find that they kind of find a secluded place or a somewhat sheltered place, and they pretty much hang out there um, overnight or when it's raining, um, they, they will find a place that's not gonna get wet. Um, and if it's windy, they will be out in the wind to some extent, but if it's very, very windy, um, you've seen how they fly. They kind of go all over. It looks like they're having a hard time as it is. So, <laughs> Are butterfly houses helpful? Should you install a butterfly house in your garden? Um, butterfly houses, sometimes butterflies will go into them. Um, we don't have a butterfly house in the 4-H Children's Garden right now, but we're going to put one in. It's not really because the butterflies are going to use it, but it's because we can paint it with butterflies on it, make it look cool and fun. And it's, it's so it's fun to do. So okay. I would say yes. <laughs> okay. Just don't, be, don't be disappointed if no butterflies come oh. and stay in your house. In fact, the butterfly house that we used to have out there was so brightly painted and so interesting. I always told our visitors that no self respecting butterfly would live in that house. <laughs> Do you need to provide a water source for butterflies? I know for birds, they like 
water a water source not only to drink but to groom themselves yes butterflies do need a water source um, and they are going to drink it what they really need is they need a wet area but it, um, so wet soil wet sand is ideal um, because they they can um, suck up some water from that they they will go to a, we have a, a small pond in the indoor 4-H children's garden and um, they will use that to drink. They will also just get enough moisture out of our um, feeding stations. But yeah, they do like a some wetness, yes. Okay, all right. Um, Catherine, do you have any questions? Yeah, sure. Um, so. I am, and I know a lot of other people are um, pretty excited with this warm weather to get outside and start working on their gardens. You mentioned a couple um, flowers that are butterfly friendly. Could you uh, go back over some of those and um, comment on which ones are native to Michigan? Okay, um, the butterfly, there's a plant called a butterfly weed or a butterfly flower. So there's two different things. Um, butterfly weed is an Asclepius. It's a, it's a re relative of milkweed. It is native. It has an orange flower on it. Um, it is a perennial. And so that one is a great one to have. Butterfly flower is also called Pentis. That is a non-native, but it is a fantastic butterfly uh, flower. Butterflies really like it. It's an annual, so it's going to grow short. Um, Lantana is another really, really good one. It's a perennial. It um, is a relatively low growing plant, usually a yellow or a yellow orange flower. Um, there are cultivars of that that aren't gonna be native Michigan cultivars, but Lantana is native to the Midwest. Um, let's see, those are, those are two big ones. Marigold, is a non-native but is a really good it's easy to grow it's easy to get you can find seedlings of it almost anywhere and butterflies do like it petunia um, is native across much well actually petunias are native to a much so, further south petunias are very common in our landscapes lots and lots of people plant them in planter boxes and things like that um, and they're really easy to grow and if you get some of the ones that are called wave petunias, they flower all summer long. Um, about the only thing you need to do to them is to give them um, a little bit of fertilizer every now and then. <clears throat> um, there is, there are some other um, ones. There's a uh, one called um, Dame's Rocket, which is a tall purple flower. That one is native to the Midwest and is an interesting plant. It shoots up this big tall spike that has purple flowers up on top of it that uh, butterflies like. In the outdoor garden, we also have um, some plant called sedum. They flower much later in the season. They don't usually flower until about the beginning of September. And so they provide a food source for butterflies as they go into the fall and into the, uh, into the fall. So those are a few of them. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, that on our webpage, that, she, that uh, page that are the, the picture of all the different flowers, they're all, they all have their names on that. And the other links had lots of um, butterfly plants. Mm -hmm. I'll have to check that out. I know I have a couple, couple of those. I've seen them all over, so. <laughs> there you go. If you want to see monarchs, do you need to plant milkweed? Monarchs, yes. You need to have milkweed around. Um, it's You can find milkweed sometimes. Um, milkweed is, it's not a hard plant to grow, but when, it seems that we, when you want to plant it and have it grow someplace, it just doesn't want to do that. And so it's going to grow wherever it wants to. Um, we... And then it will self-seed um, on a good year. So yeah, um, and the other thing about mono, or I mean, excuse me, about milkweed that most people don't know is when it flowers, if you ever see a milkweed flowering, drop everything you're doing and go and smell the flower. They're absolutely <laughs> wonderful. 
And I grew up with them as a kid. We had buckwheat everywhere and there were monarchs <laughs> everywhere and you never paid any attention to it. I mean, we, right. we noticed the butterflies, but I had never smelled the flower until about five years ago. And it's just, it's glorious. So yes, if you can get milkweeds, absolutely. Um, and you, the, you will, can't guarantee that you'll have monarchs, but if you have a patch of milkweed, pretty, you can be pretty sure that you're gonna have some monarchs. Awesome. And we did have a comment from Alexa. She says, Barsons in Westland has milkweed for sale. So there, there have been more and more garden centers that have been growing it with more and more interest in having butterfly gardens and providing um, the right habitat for butterflies. Great, awesome. Is there a difference between, I know there's a couple different types of milkweed, there's swamp milkweed and regular milkweed. Do monarchs like both of those? Monarchs will use both of them. Um, quite often the regular milkweed is a little easier to, it's not quite as temperamental, it's a little easier to grow. But as soon as I say that, I'll have somebody, I'll talk to somebody that says, well, I've tried both of them and the swamp milkweed grows for me and the regular one doesn't. So, um, but they will, they will feed on, they will lay their eggs on, their larva will feed on and the adults will um, use the flowers from both of them. I, I would be one of those. I can grow swamp milkweed, but not regular. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Any other questions, Catherine? Um, no, it looks like we're, we're running out of time. Um, but, I, you know, I want to thank you again, Norm, for joining us and telling us more about the gardens. And um, they are open to the public outside. That's correct. Yes, the gardens are open. Um, and if you look on our website, there's a, along that top bar, there's a, on the far left, is, it says COVID-19. So it'll tell you what's new. The only thing that's, we ask people to socially distance and until further notice, our restrooms are closed. So we do not have restroom facilities and we do not have wa um, drinking water out there. We hope that that will change before the end of the summer, but we have no clue, just like, everybody else. Right, right. Well, I'll have to take a walk and uh, check out the garden soon. So do that. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to share with viewers before we um, end the live stream? Um, no, that pretty much is it. I do invite people to come out the garden. Like I said, we are planting. It is going to look good all summer long. We don't have any specific um, programs but we would love to have you come out and see it and spend some time. It's a great way to get out of the house and um, enjoy plants and have a good time. Great. Well, we will be sure to add a link to um, the 4-H Gardens website on the live stream here. Um, we also have a short survey for everyone um, tuning in. We'd love to hear from you. This is the first time that we've um, put together a digital festival like this. So we'd love your, your feedback so we can make this even better as we <laughs> move forward. So thanks again, Norm, and thanks again to everyone tuning in. Hey, bye-bye. Thank you. Take care.